All right, because they stuck together last time, there's a book sitting on top, So, but it ended up face down, so I don't actually know what it was. Today's book is Tom and Jerry's Party. Ooh. So Another? we've had Sylvester and Tweety earlier, but now we'll have Tom and Jerry. Ah. You know, competing studios. Yeah. Golden books. The people who can license from anyone, apparently. Apparently. Hello, and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Yes, I, I may take a break from these donated books, but today is not that day. So today we are looking at another little golden book. MGM's. Tom and Jerry's Party, provided to Ember's Reading Room by Sasami-chan. Told by Steffi Fletcher. Pictures by MGM Cartoons. Adapted by Harvey Eisenberg and Samuel Armstrong. It was Cook's night out. She buttoned on her coat and put on her good black hat. She threw one last look around the kitchen. Everything was spick and span. Everything was in its place, she thought. Hmm, very nice. Not many outlines, and the outlines that are there are mostly um, to make sure the face is defined from the background. Because there is some similarity in color between the wall and the skin complexion. Cook hadn't noticed that the icebox door was open, but Tom Cat had. This is the night for a party, he chuckled. As soon as Cook had left, he brought out cupcakes and cream from the icebox. When the food was ready... Tom scrambled up to a pantry shelf. He brought down streamers left over from a New Year's Eve party. Humming gaily, Tom decorated the kitchen. Now to hand out invitations, he said when he had finished. I could go for some cupcakes right now, and I have some in mind. <laughs> well, I wouldn't really call them cupcakes. They're technically smart cakes. I guess we could put a link to the website since you mentioned them. And the art is... Very nice. It's expressive. It's different than the show because the show uses heavy outlining to simplify things and make it easier to draw several hundred frames. Also, the look of Tom and Jerry changes over the years, so. Quickly, Tom Cat ran out into the dark night and down to the house of the Fiddler Cat. Fiddler Cat! Fiddler Cat! He called. I'm having a party. Come and bring your fiddle. From the house of the Fiddler Cat, Tom ran on to the house of Yellow Melisande. Probably got that wrong. From the house of Melisande, he ran on to the houses of all his friends. By the time Tom Cat returned back home, six happy cats were trotting along behind him. Soon the party was in full swing. The Fiddler Cat played his fiddle. Melisande stood beside him and sang. A cat's life is the life for me, she sang. Meow, meow, it's wild and free. The other cats danced to the music and cast hungry looks at the cupcakes, of which I only see four. Hmm. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six. These two are these two, but that one, you're right. I missed that one. Hopefully these are two different tables because one has three mugs and three cupcakes and the other has two mugs and four cupcakes. So... If all of that exists, we do have enough. Also, Fiddler Cat looks very different from the previous page. I think... No facial markings. If you look at that one and that one. Which is interesting because... It starts out with Fiddler Cat first. Somebody else was watching the cupcakes too. Jerry and Tuffy stood at the door of their mouse hole. Look at all that food, Tuffy, Jerry said hungrily. Let's go get some of it. As softly as could be, they scared skittered up onto the table and pounced on the cupcakes. Hey! Tomcat cried. Thieves! Thieves! Stop them! Stop them! You know, I just realized something. I don't think I ever really heard them talk more than like one or two words in the show. They usually didn't talk a lot. It was usually humans talking to facilitate anything. I do like how smooth the art is, and it's mostly using shading to give outlines to objects. Just then, they heard heavy steps coming toward the kitchen. It's Cook, Tomcat whispered. She's back early. Jerry leaped off the table. He ran to Tom and pulled at his paw. In there, he urged, pointing to his mouse hole. Hide the cake in there. I think I know where this is going, but... 
the cats whisked the cupcakes and cream off the table. Pushing and pulling, Jerry and Tuffy squeezed them through the mouse hole door. Yes, because of course Cook won't miss them from the refrigerator. Or the cups from the cupboard. If she is coming back, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the case of, oh, I forgot something. Grab and leave. Mm -hmm. And then we find out all the cakes are eaten by Jerry. And Tuffy. The footsteps came nearer and nearer. Tom flew around the kitchen. The bunting, he cried. Take down the bunting. And I'm pretty sure if Cook is coming back, all she's hearing now is meow, meow, meow. <laughs> Cook started to open the door. The fiddler cat dove into the wastebasket. Yellow Masande leaped into the washing machine. If they sit, they fit. A third cat squeezed herself behind the door, and two little kittens hid trembling in the market basket. It's very colorful art. Those are a lot of pastel colors for the walls and doors. That is a very, um, it's not lime green. It's seafoam? Seafoam? A seafoam would be good. Also, the shadow sticking out there, hiding eh. behind the door. Oh, so there should be some light on the front of the cat there if that shadow was being cast by him. When Cook came in, there was only Tom, lying sleepily under the kitchen table. Land sake, said Cook. I thought I heard a noise. Must have been my imagination. And with a shake of her head, she left again. So you didn't wait for her to properly leave? Because she came back in because she thought she heard a noise. So how far gone was she? She should have been pretty far gone, but okay. Apparently not so much. Coast clear, whistled Jerry. The cats came creeping out of their hiding places. Ahem said Tom to Jerry. I suppose now you intend to keep all those cupcakes. Jerry threw out his chest and looked noble. Certainly not, he answered. Who am I to spoil a party? Behind his paw, he whispered to Tuffy. We couldn't have eaten all those cakes alone anyway. Shh. Based on what I've seen of Tuffy in the show, yes. They certainly could have. So the party started again, gayer than ever. The fiddler cat played, Melisande sang. In the middle of the floor danced Jerry and Tuffy, each with a big crumb of cake in his paw. Ah, back when that word had a single definition. And they're all happily dancing and singing, because the golden cat has the paw on the chest and hand out, mm -hmm. obviously singing to the tune, the tune. Jerry and Tuffy? Yeah. Are dancing... The kitty has a cupcake. They have, I'm guessing, cheese, because it doesn't look like cupcake. Each with a big crumb of cake in his paw. Ah. Mm, he yeah. doesn't listen to me, folks. I vaguely remember it being about cake, but I was like, at this point, I'm going to go by the art, and the art right now, they actually look puffy, not like pieces of cake, but more like puffy, like popcorn. So should we move on to this last page? This has nothing to do with the story. Yes, uh, this what appears to be a coupon that doesn't have appear to have an expiration date. <laughs> Dear parents, for over 40 years, children all over the world have grown with golden books. Through hundreds of golden book titles, youngsters have discovered both the fun and excitement of reading. Take advantage of the attached coupon today to give your children more golden years. Golden books. Note, this coupon not redeemable at McDonald's restaurants may be redeemed at participating retail outlets. Does anyone remember McDonald's having golden books? Were they like in like a kid's toy thing? Yeah, maybe some sort of Happy Meal thing, but that's an interesting exclusion. Yeah. And the coupon for more golden fun, save 15 cents, which considering this book cost 89 cents at the time was a huge discount. Off the purchase price of any one golden book with the suggested retail price of $1.50 or more. Okay, less, less valuable now. And they show images of three different books. My Goodnight Book, Mother Goose in the City, and The Saggy Baggy Elephant. And actually on the coupon it has that note again. Coupon not redeemable at McDonald's restaurants. It may be redeemed at participating retail outlets. And then flipping over to the back side... Look for these and other golden books at your store. ABC, I Can Do It By Myself, The Three Little Pigs, Richard Scarry's Best Storybook Ever, The Pokey Little Puppy at the Fair, and My First Counting Book. 
and because I can't read all of the print and fine print on the other side of the coupon. 15 cents off the purchase price of any two little golden books or any one golden book was a suggested retail price of $1.50 or more to the dealer. For each coupon you accept for any two little golden books or any one golden book with a suggested retail price of $1.50 or more, we will pay you 15 cents plus 7 cents handling charges provided you and your customer have complied with the terms of this offer. Any unauthorized application could constitute fraud. Invoices showing your purchases of sufficient stock to cover all coupons redeemed must be shown upon request. Void where prohibited, taxed or restricted. Your customers must pay any sales tax. Cash value 1 20th of 1 cent. Offer good only in USA. Redeemed by mailing to Western Publishing Company, Inc. PO Box 1639, Clinton, Iowa, 52734. Copyright 1982, Western Publishing Company. Yeah, there is no expiration date on this. Interesting, though. Mailing it in for redemption. That's the dealer's job. Ah, yeah, but I think it still works with what I was about to say. 15 cents wouldn't cover the stamp. No, no. The, the 15 cents plus the 7 cents would not cover the stamp. So it's not worth it sending it in. For the dealer. It's worth it for me if I can get a retailer to take it. <laughs> uh, the problem is taking it out of the book. I know. Scissors in a book. That's the real problem here. Well, it, it doesn't say that you can't make a facsimile. Ah, uh, people making coupons back then. You have so many l restrictions printed under the fine print of coupons nowadays. Because companies realize... People get very smart with the coupons. They will find all the loopholes. And this has been MGM's Tom and Jerry's Party, A Little Golden Book. Told by Stefani Fletcher. Pictures by MGM Cartoons. Adapted by Harvey Eisenberg and Samuel Armstrong. And donated by Sasami Chan. So... There's a little difference on the inside cover. You know where you say this little golden book belongs to? This says this little golden book from McDonald's belongs to. So this was probably part of a Happy Meal thing. Ah. Also, I just realized something. Tom never plays a fiddle, and neither does Jerry in this book. Only except for the cover and the inside cover. Yes, they're both shown with the fiddle, but in the story, they don't use the fiddle at all. Okay, an Amazon link for this one might be a little hard since it's a McDonald's book, but we could probably find a regular edition of it because I'm sure they didn't limit this just to a printing for McDonald's. Not when you have MGM licensing involved. Though, it would be interesting if this was exclusively at McDonald's. Possible research. Thanks again for listening.